Now for our story. The young Italian couple, Mario and Carla Descari, had enjoyed themselves at the opening of the supper club this evening. The occasion had represented a celebration for them, the beginning of a new phase in their relationship. Mario had conquered his jealous suspicions regarding Bill Mead and Carla, founded on a rumor he'd heard in Wakefield. A conversation with Aunt Mary had made him see how foolish it was for him to doubt his wife's love, and he'd resolved to overcome his jealousy. From now on, he was going to trust his wife, trust her love for him. Mario had been very gay when they started out for home with Bill and Peggy in Bill's new car, but suddenly his mood had changed. The others had noticed his silence, but had decided he was simply tired and sleepy. Well, now the young Italian couple are in their bedroom. Carla is brushing her hair while Mario, still fully dressed, watches his wife's reflection in the mirror. Oh, I had such a good time tonight, Mario. Didn't you? Beautiful, the way Lily Devon changed that old banquet room. Mario, let's go there every once in a while, shall we? It's good for us, getting out and seeing people. Now that we're such good friends with Bill and Peggy, we can all go together, huh? Mario. What? What's the matter? You haven't said a word. How could I? You've been talking a blue streak. Oh, yes, I guess I have been. I was just excited from the party. From the party, huh? Oh, sure, Mario, you know, seeing everybody, being dressed up, and the music. Is that the only reason you're all hopped up? Well, what do you mean, Mario? Why else? I'm just asking. Mario, what's wrong? What could be wrong? If you're thinking about the scarf, I don't blame you for being mad at me. Yeah. The scarf. I told Aunt Mary you probably would be. Told Aunt Mary? How come you said a thing like that to her? Well, she was standing there when I went to the Lost and Found to ask about it. But I'm sure it'll turn up, Mario. After all, no one could mistake it for theirs. There isn't another one like it in town. That's right. No one could mistake it, Carla. Surprised you aren't more worried about it than you are. But, darling, what good would that do? Yeah, that's right. It's done now, isn't it? Besides, I feel so certain it will turn up. Nobody who was there tonight would keep it. Oh, Mario, are you really mad at me because I lost it? Mad at you, Carla? Why should I be mad at you? Well, you're, you're acting so funny about it. <laughs> I'm just a funny guy. Oh, Mario, I know it was careless of me, but sure. Yeah. Yes, you were careless, all right. I'm not mad at you, Carla, because it isn't lost anymore. What? No, I found it. You found it? Here. Here's your scarf. What? Mario, and all this time you've been making me feel so terrible. Why didn't you tell me you had it? Oh, I'm so relieved. Next time I'll be very careful. Yeah, next time. Where did you find it? I found it in the back of Bill Mead's car. You did? But that's funny. How on earth would it have gotten there? That's what I'm asking you. And don't pretend you don't know. But, oh, Mario, how should I know? You remember, we were out on the terrace, you and I. Yeah. You told me to go dance with Peggy. You said you had something you wanted to do. Well, I found out what it was. Well, sure, I wanted to talk to Bill. Talk to him? That's a laugh. You certainly wanted privacy for this talk. You had to go all the way out to the parking lot and sit in the back of his car. Mario, do you really think... What else can I think? It was there, I tell you. Your scarf, it was there in the back of Bill's car. He didn't walk there. You were wearing it, and it... came off. Probably Bill... Bill... and you... You better tell me what happened, Carla. Tell me. Nothing happened, Mario. Nothing at all. I wasn't in Bill's car. Believe me, I wasn't. You're lying. No, no, I'm not. It's the truth, Mario. You think I'm dummy enough to believe that? Look, Carla. I found it there. Maybe somebody picked it up and put it in the first place they thought of. I'm not a fool, Carla. I want the truth from you. Well, I, I know it sounds foolish, but what else can I say? I, I am telling you the truth. I don't know how it got there. I wasn't near Bill's car tonight, not until we all went out to go home. I've told you over and over, Mario. Bill's just a friend. You ought to know that by now. You should know by the way Peggy loves him. Sure, Peggy loves him. Maybe she's in the same boat with me. Maybe he lies to her like you lie to me. Oh. 
Carla. I think you'd better tell me what happened while I was away. Well, Peggy was engaged to this other fellow. You and Bill had a fine time for yourselves then, didn't you? Mario, you don't mean that. Well, this is all in your own head. All this wicked thinking, because you imagine these things. I didn't imagine your scarf being in Bill's car, did I? It was there. I felt it in my hand right in Bill Mead's car when I was looking for the compact you dropped. I felt the soft material of it and... Then I knew the whole story. But you didn't know, because there's nothing to know. You, you made it up somehow. Oh, I don't understand what's happening to us. Yeah. Well, I understand. And I'm going to do something about it, too. What do you mean? You think I'm going to stand around and let my wife double-cross me with a guy who's supposed to be a friend? Not on your life. But he is your friend, Mario. These things that keep happening, I, I can't understand. I see how they must look to you. And to me, it's like a, a nightmare because they're not true. That's what you tried to make me believe before. You kept saying I just looked that way. But I should trust you. And I did. You talked me out of it all right. And then you thought you were safe. You thought you didn't have to be careful anymore. Oh. Only you made the mistake of leaving your scarf. Oh, why can't I make you see? You have, I see, all right. I'm wise now. You don't have to act anymore. Pretending to love me. Giving me all this stuff about looking at you so I could see how you love me. While I'm looking. It's true, Mario, I do love you. Whether you believe it or not. But I don't know what to do. Everything was all right. We were happy tonight. And now I... Yeah. And now... I was happy. You got around me so I trusted you. I told myself I was foolish. I wouldn't let myself think about it. Let them look at my wife, I said to myself. She only loves me. So what difference does it make? And I watched you, laughing with Bill. Just friends, that's all. That's what I told myself. Till tonight, when I saw your scarf there, then I know. If you believe it, how can I convince you? I've told you so many times. There's nothing more I can say. That won't do you any good. <laughs> you think a few tears and I'll forgive you. You're wrong. No. I'm so tired of trying to make you understand. I feel so helpless. Sure, you're helpless. Because this is finally it, Carla. This is the one time you can't talk yourself out of it. But you're going to talk, Carla. You're going to tell me the truth. I don't know anymore. I can't. Stop it. Stop crying to hear me. Oh, Mario, oh, Mario. Why? Why? You ask why. After the night... You were gone a long time when you were with Bill. Yes, but I... And I find your scarf in his car. I'm supposed to laugh and say, what a coincidence, and not make anything of it. All right, all right, make something of it. I don't know anymore. No, you're going to tell me. Just let me alone, Mario. You're going to tell me, Carla, everything. And this time it's going to be the truth. The truth, the truth. You don't know the truth. I'm going to hear it from you. When I was overseas, when did you and Bill Mead start becoming such friends? We didn't. Tell me how you met him, Carla. Where was it? What did he say to you? Tell me about how you used to come to here, to the farm. Oh. Did you fix dinner for him, Carla? <laughs> Tell me. Tell me or I'll shake it out of you. Let go of me, Mario. And those letters you used to write to me. Suppose Bill was sitting beside you, reading over your shoulder, kissing you. Oh, Mario. You're going to tell me now, Carla. About all the times, everything, Carla. From the very beginning. Mario's hands dug into her shoulders. Carla could only shake her head. She sobbed brokenly. Finally, her husband pushed her away from him. Carla fell to the floor. She lay there inert as she heard the sound of a slamming door. Mario had left the house. And Ben Calvert, who had placed Carla's scarf in Bill's car tonight, would have been well pleased if he had known the scene which had just taken place at the Scary farmhouse. 